Mission 9 is the first mission in the run that doesn't have a boss to stealth kill. As such, we'll have to recoup the points lost by using a clever consecutive SK setup. Also, this is another mission in which the sword remains sheathed until further in the level. Start by taking a step forward, then dashing three times to R jump onto the wall. L jump onto the roof, dash over the apex, and L jump across the gap. Dash four times, then L jump onto the raised area. Roll out, then run towards the stairs guard and draw the sword. Slash SK the guard and immediately begin dashing towards the entrance of the compound. Run through the gates, slash the door, and L jump up. Dash once in this specific area, then run a large arcing path to the left. L jump to aerial SK the sitting guard, leading into the consecutive SK. Run back into the hallway and dash four times towards the walkway guard, leading into an R jump to back SK. Run to the left and slash through the door, dashing or slashing into the ending trigger. Aim for times around 40 seconds. The opening of this mission is a bit strange, but there is a reason. Three dashes alone isn't quite enough to make the R jump onto the wall. More importantly, there's a bottomless pit at the start of the level. While it doesn't pose much of a threat itself, the edges can eat inputs and cause significant slowdowns. Try to steer clear of this potential inconsistency and avoid the pit. As touched upon earlier, the sword remains sheathed until the slash SK in the middle of the level. This has a few useful attributes. The reduction in visibility prevents the multitude of guards from fully spotting you as you rush through the first half of the mission. Drawing the sword just before the stairs guard serves a tactical purpose. Aside from being at the point in which you need to use the sword, the noise generated from the draw causes the guard to enter a purple lantern state. This causes him to break out of his patrol path and remain stationary, making the slash SK much easier to execute. Be sure to take a few steps in a running animation before drawing to avoid an uncancelable stationary sword draw animation, which both loses time and makes slash SK timing more difficult. Some care needs to be taken when entering the compound, which is why the approach is so wonky. There's a spear guard to the left of the doors in a patrol cycle, who should be facing west as we enter the compound. That's exactly what we want. If we come barreling in with dashes all the way to the door, the guard will hear us and look towards us, typically resulting in getting spotted while trying to enter the door. Speaking of doors, they can be quite jank in Tenchu Z. It's possible to get stuck on the door, forcing you to wiggle out of its collision. It looks as if your character is just standing there, but with just enough of the correct jiggling, you can break free. It's an obnoxious bug that comes up sometimes and can kill a run prematurely, so look out for it and be prepared to wiggle, jiggle, or in the most dire of circumstances, both. You'll notice that many of the shoji, but not all, retain their full collision for a while after slashing them. This is why the dash of the XA cancel here goes nowhere. The Shoji's collision is still active, despite being destroyed. Since running takes a bit of time to get up to speed, follow up the XA input with a movement option that provides immediate velocity, such as more dashes or an L jump. Despite this slowdown, it's still faster than sheathing the sword and opening the Shoji like a normal human being. The consecutive SK has a bit of a goofy setup, in line with the equally goofy guard arrangement. The guards are seated, facing each other in an east-west configuration, and close enough to each other for a consecutive SK. The key to this sound-based setup is getting the east guard into a purple lantern state without affecting the west guard. This is where the singular dash in the area comes into play. The dash in this position is loud enough for the East Guard to hear, but leaves the West Guard unaware and in his passive sake drinking routine. Due to this, we can run through the hallway and into position without being spotted by either guard. The East Guard will be facing away from the doorway, and the West Guard will be largely oblivious to the sword-wielding ninja flying into the room. 
The path from the entryway to the adjacent room is made in a large arc to avoid being spotted by the West Guard. Even though he is largely preoccupied, he can still detect you if the angle of attack is too shallow. Giving the entry into the room a wide berth not only makes this strat very consistent, but also allows for a late purple lantern on the West Guard, and loosens the precision for the jump in drastically. The timing for the L jump is very lenient. The main concern is to avoid bonking your head on the doorway too much, which can kill your trajectory and cause the infamously bad left side SK. These SKs are incredibly difficult to chain into a consecutive SK, and will most likely cause a reset due to hemorrhaging so much time rather early in the run. While the walkway guard SK has a fair bit of nuance to it, the approach itself has its own wrinkle. Specifically, this scene. To the surprise of just about no one, Tenchu Z has some rather buggy terrain throughout the game, typically found at various seams within the ground or floors. These pieces of terrain incorrectly handle the noise generated by the character, effectively amplifying any noise-making movement upon them. What's worse is that this behavior isn't entirely consistent. Long story short, avoid landing a dash or running on this scene, as it can cause the walkway guard to break his cycle, enter purple lantern state, and face you all in a single frame. The final SK is trickier than it may appear to be, buggy terrain aside. The walkway guard is the SK target, but the other guard, we call Wagon Guard, needs to be taken into account. Specifically, the Wagon Guard is nearing the end of his stationary phase as we approach the Hallway Guard, and he will turn around during his next phase. As such, we need to dispatch the Hallway Guard and complete the level before being spotted by the Wagon Guard. Naturally, we just love to slash SK the Walkway Guard and go about our speedrun, but this simply isn't an option due to the proximity to the Wagon Guard. Slash SKs are incredibly loud according to Tenchu Z's sound mechanics, so such a tactic causes the wagon guard to immediately become alerted and spot you well before you can escape the area. The best option here is a back SK, which is preferred. A right side SK is a fairly common outcome and works well enough. An aerial or crouch SK is serviceable, but the lethargic nature of these variants could lead to being spotted if there were any slowdowns earlier in the mission. You may have noticed that going for a back SK out of an R jump implies that we're not holding the crouch button to soft land, as this would typically lock us into a crouch SK. Yet, hard landing would draw the attention of the wagon guard, spotting us midway through an SK, and an SK in the air always yields the aptly named aerial SK. One of the many quirks of Tenchi Z comes into play here. By executing an SK within a few frames of hitting the ground, the landing is essentially cancelled by the SK animation, including the noise it would otherwise make. Since failing to cancel a hard landing will result in a detection, a mitigation strategy is holding crouch as you attempt the last SK. Successfully cancelling the landing will result in a back or left side SK, essentially ignoring the crouch input. If you're too late and don't cancel the landing, you will soft land and execute a crouch SK preventing the wagon guard from hearing you and potentially saving your run. This enables a unique option select that leaves the wagon guard oblivious, allowing the final points to be acquired for their requisite Ninja 5 ranking just before completing the mission. なんだ、なんだ、なんだ。なんだ、なんだ、なんだ。なんだ、なんだ、なんだ。なんだ、なんだ、なんだ。なんだ、なんだ、なんだ。なんだ、なんだ、なんだ。なんだ、なんだ、